You know, sometimes people ask, what do you believe? What do you believe about this? Or what do you believe about that? Uh, what do you believe about salvation? What do you believe about the Bible? What do you believe about God? And, you know, depending on who you ask, you can get any number of responses to that. For example, if you ask a Jehovah's Witness, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? Oh, He's the angel uh, uh, Michael, the archangel Michael, and the first created. He's not, uh, he's not uh, God. He's not the Son of God. There's no such thing as a trinity. Uh, or if you ask the uh, Mormons, what do you believe about God? Oh, they might say, well, God is uh, Adam, who uh, after his earthly life now lives a celestial life as our God. Or you ask the Presbyterians, what do you believe about the Bible? Oh, the Bible's a good book. It's, uh, it's profitable, uh, just like any other good book of literature is profitable. But, you know, we have other sources for our, for our religious authority, the Westminster Confession of Faith, for example. And so, you know, it just depends on who you ask about what you believe and whether what you believe is in harmony with your particular uh, religious group. Well, when we ask the question, what do you believe? We ask that question for a very different reason than to see whether or not you're in harmony with a, a man-made doctrine. When we ask the question, what do you believe? We're trying to ascertain whether or not what we believe is in harmony with the Bible is in harmony with God's Word. And so when someone asks, what do you believe about this? What's the response? The Bible says, right? It doesn't matter what I believe. Only in so far as what I believe harmonizes with the Bible does it matter. If what I believe doesn't harmonize with the Bible, then it really doesn't matter what I believe because it's no profit to anybody. But if what I believe is in harmony with the Bible, and I can demonstrate that, then not only should I believe it, but everybody should believe it. And so, in this lesson, we're asking the question, what do we believe about works and grace? And I'm posing that in such a way that we're asking, asking it of ourselves. What do, what, what do I believe about works and grace. You know, this is, this is a subject that you can ask uh, just about anybody uh, uh, this question. What do you believe about works and grace? And you'll get any number of different answers. Well, it's grace only, not by works at all. If you're asking almost anybody in the Protestant denominational world, uh, it's grace only, doesn't have anything to do with works. If you ask a Catholic, it's works, doesn't have anything to do with grace. And so it, it's different answers from different people. And so when we ask the question, what do I believe about works and grace? I want to make sure that what I believe harmonizes with the Bible. If what I believe harmonizes with the Bible, then as uh, Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I should hold to it. If it doesn't harmonize with the Bible, I shouldn't hold to it. I should get rid of it. And so when we ask this question, what we believe about works and grace, and we begin to examine this subject, it's understood that there's a, a wide divergence of understanding about this subject. One of the reasons I'm, I'm presenting this lesson today is because we just talked about it in the Genesis class on Tuesday night. The correlation between works and grace. And so I wanted to look at that in some more detail to make sure that what we believe is in harmony with the Bible, and to make sure that if what we believe is in harmony with the Bible, we can convey that to others to see if what they believe is in harmony with the Bible. Because we all want to be united on what the Bible says. That's what Jesus prayed for, that, that we would all be united on what the Bible says, on, on His Word. So we want to look at that. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9, is the text for our lesson. And it's a text that many people go to to express an incorrect understanding of works and grace. Because they go over here and they read this, But God who is rich in mercy, for His great love 
wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace alone ye are saved. It doesn't say grace alone, does it? It says by grace ye are saved. Amen. Yes, I'm saved by grace. Absolutely. I am saved by grace. That's what that verse says. I'm saved by grace. But that verse does not say by grace alone. And when you go, when you start putting words in, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses put the word other in Colossians chapter 1, where, where in Colossians chapter 1 it says uh, in verse 16 that, that all things were created by Christ and for Christ. Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that Christ is, is God, and so they put all other things to, to, make, to make Jesus not be God. Well, tell me, what is the difference between the Jehovah's Witnesses putting the word other in Colossians chapter 1 to say that Jesus was created and then He created all other things when the word other is not in the text. They put the word other in there and then Protestant denominational folks putting the word alone in here. There's no difference. It's the same thing. The Jehovah's Witnesses make it a false doctrine on God and Protestant denominationalism makes it a false doctrine on grace. Same thing. It says, By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace alone are ye saved through faith. Well, that'd be self-contradictory, wouldn't it? If you said, for by grace alone are ye saved through faith, well, then it, 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 you, you just contradicted your the statement within itself. Because if it's grace alone, then you got to put the period there. You can't keep reading. And it says, by grace through faith. Well, if it's by grace through faith, then it's not grace alone, it's not faith alone. It's by grace through faith. Literally there, through the faith. The faith is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jude 3 says, Brethren, while I was uh, very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, to contend for it, to defend it, because there's false teachers trying to twist it. And so the faith is the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Christ. And that's what it says there. And in the Greek, there's uh, the, the uh, implied definite article there when it says, for by grace are ye saved through the faith, that is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Doesn't that harmonize with what Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to him that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so, it's by grace are ye saved through the faith, God's power unto salvation, that which God gave by his grace. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, Protestant denominational folks look at this and they say that that's grace alone because it's not of works lest any man should boast. And if you do anything to contribute to your salvation, well then that's something you can boast of. For example, if you say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, well then you can boast of that because you did the work of faith. Oh no, they, they don't go there, do they? But if that's their logic, then you could. Well, look at what I can boast of. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, that'd just be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Well, okay, let me boast of confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because the Bible says, with the heart one who believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, that's something I do. With the mouth I confess unto salvation. I do that so I can boast of that. Look at what I did. I confessed unto salvation. Well, that's ridiculous. You can't boast of confessing that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God because it's not a work that you came up with. You didn't invent confessing uh, unto salvation. God did. God said, if you want to be saved, you've got to confess that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, i got to do it. But God gave the work to be done. So no, it's nothing I can boast of. Does that mean I don't contribute anything to my salvation? Well, it says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I have to contribute that to my salvation. And then having made that confession with the mouth unto salvation, I have to be baptized to have my sins washed away uh, by the blood of Christ. Acts 22, verse 16. Arise, you do that. You arise and be baptized. You do that. You arise and you be baptized to wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Well, let me boast of that. Man, did you see what I did? I got up and got down in that water and the blood of Christ just washed away my sins and I did that. 